Hey Rec Room players, we've all been excited about this for a long time and now it's time to talk about how to use the spawner gadget. The spawner gadget lets you spawn enemy NPCs that can follow you, attack you, and take damage from players' weapons. The spawner also lets you spawn some objects. With the spawner, you can make your own cooperative quests, wave shooters, or anything at all that needs enemies to fight. The first step for creating with NPCs is to find your maker pen. Open your watch menu and press the backpack button to find your maker pen. Then press the use button to spawn it. To get yourself a spawner gadget, look at the top of your maker pen and open the palette. Then go to the gadgets tab and under other gadgets go to the second page to find the spawner gadget. Let's start by spawning our first enemy. Use the configure tool on the spawner gadget to open the configure menu. We need to tell the spawner what it should be spawning here in the first panel where it says object. I'm going to select one of these little explosive bots that are always killing teleporters in Jumbotron. Send a signal to the red input pin to start the spawner. I'm going to do this using this button prop, which you can find by searching for it in the palette. The button's red output pin will send a signal when I press it, so now I'll use the wire tool to get ready to send a signal to the spawner. Now, when I press the button, the spawner activates and an NPC appears. So what's this notification? It says, no nav mesh present for AI, and it tells us to go into the watch menu. That's referring to the AI nav mesh. We'll follow those instructions and talk about the nav mesh a little bit later. Back to configuring the spawner. Spawners don't need to do only one enemy at a time. They let you spawn entire waves of enemies. To spawn a wave, just increase the number to spawn setting. The spawner needs a little bit of time between spawning each enemy, and you can adjust that but the minimum is two tenths of a second. There's one thing you gotta keep in mind when spawning waves of NPCs. The maximum number, don't interrupt me. The maximum number of AI that can be spawned in a room at the same time is 10. Now let's look at the other pins on the spawner gadget. Remember, if you use your wire tool and hover over pins on any gadget, you'll get a tooltip with a little info about what it does. The All Spawn pin sends a signal after the last NPC in a wave spawns. The All Destroyed pin sends a signal after the NPCs spawned in a wave have been destroyed. Use these for controlling sequences of events in your game or quest. The green Spawned ID pin sends the object ID of the NPC or object most recently spawned. Every NPC has a unique number like this, and you can use that number with some other gadgets like the Object Respawner, or the Set Tags chip. The Reset pin stops any currently spawning wave and immediately deletes all the NPCs spawned from that particular gadget. The Spawner gadget has a couple more useful features. First, you can tell the gadget to add object tags to NPCs as they spawn. Just make sure to tick this box that says Apply Tags to Spawned Objects. And then go to the next page and find the Edit Tags button. Any tags listed here in the spawner gadget will automatically be applied to anything spawned. Try using tags on your NPCs to control how they interact with gadgets, like trigger volumes and look at gizmos. The spawner can also be attached to any kind of gizmo. Try using this as a way to spread out waves of NPCs as they spawn. And one other thing to remember about the spawner is that it can also spawn some objects, like this coconut bomb. These work the same way as NPCs, except of course, they don't have AI, and they won't move around or attack you. Usually. So, that's everything about how to set up the spawner gadget itself, but there are two more steps before NPCs will work in your room. You need to generate a nav mesh so that the AI will understand how to move around. After that, you need to set up a game rules chip so that enemy NPCs can damage players. First of all, the nav mesh. Remember, we got a message earlier telling us that we needed to make a nav mesh by hitting a button in our watch menu. So now, go to this room, hit the settings tab, find the AI button, and hit the button for rebake nav mesh. Now we have a nav mesh in the room, which is this purple surface. This means that NPCs can start moving around. In most cases, this is all you need to do. Rec Room automatically detects the surfaces everywhere in your room that can be walked on and marks them as areas that the NPCs can move. The nav in nav mesh is just short for navigation, and mesh just means surface. This is the surface that NPCs can navigate. Some of them walk on it, and some of them fly over it. 
The basic idea here is that if a surface doesn't have nav mesh on it, then NPCs can't go there. As long as you remember to hit the rebake nav mesh button after you edit the environment of your room, then NPCs will be able to move around as you would expect. Creators also have the ability to control where the nav mesh appears, and there are two ways to do that. First of all, you can move and resize this white box. This is a volume that generates the nav mesh. We call it the nav mesh bake volume, and it automatically spawns the first time you generate a nav mesh. When you hit the rebake button, Rec Room will automatically ignore all the surfaces outside of the nav mesh bake volume. Use the manipulate tool to move the top, bottom, and sides of the volume to exclude parts of your room from the nav mesh generation process. You can also configure objects one by one to handle the nav mesh differently. For example, the nav mesh wants to generate on top of this rock, but I would prefer NPCs to walk around it rather than on top of it. To change that, I'm going to open the configure menu on this rock and go to the last page where we see an options panel that says nav mesh generation mode. Remember, if you hover your finger or cursor over any button, you'll get a helpful tooltip. All environmental objects default to generate. This means that the nav mesh will show up on top of them. Ignore means that nav mesh can be generated as if the object weren't there. Block means that nav mesh won't generate underneath an object or on top of it. That's what I want for this rock. Now I'm going to rebake the nav mesh. As we can see, there's no more mesh on top of the rock, and NPCs will know they're supposed to go around it. The final step to setting up your room with NPCs is to spawn a game rules chip. Hostile NPCs won't be able to damage players unless a game is running in your room. Open your palette menu and go to gadgets. Then go to the game chips filter and on the first page find the game rules chip. Then you can spawn one. The game rules chip has lots of options to configure. But if you want to get started right away, a new chip with the default settings works fine. Another easy way to get set up for NPCs with the game rules chip is to apply the quest game configuration which you can find on the first page. Once you start the game running, you'll be ready to fight. And that is how to set up NPCs in Rec Room. If this video is helpful, please give it a like. And subscribe to Rec Room for more tutorials and lots of fun videos.